Hey everybody, this is Adam Broad of Liberation Wells Republic High. We had a special guest last week. This is even more special. Uh, we've got two individuals from uh, Students for Liberty out in Ghana. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that is in Africa. Uh, you know, I'm I'm no uh, <laughs> master of geography or anything like that. I had you know, a little bit of trouble initially finding it on the map, just because, well, you know, I don't ever look at a map. It's been 10 years since I've looked at one. Um, but both of these gentlemen are are truly people to, to keep an eye on for with the work that they're doing. I'm just going to do a quick run through of, of uh, kind of a bio for both of these gentlemen. We've got Kwaku Adusi. Uh, Kwaku studied at uh, Kumasi Polytechnic, earning a degree in computerized accounting, where he realized that there was a serious problem affecting the growth of individuals in the Ashanti region, and formed a pressure group with his colleagues to satirize bureaucrats for their poor management of the economy. Uh, during this effort, he attracted Kofi Akosa, uh, of a small liberty organization called Africa Youth Peace Call. After completing uh, Kumsai Polytechnic in 2011, Kowaku became a staunch libertarian and adjunct scholar of Africa Youth Peace Call, and his love for liberty influenced him to run for the 2012 general election as a member of parliament where he ran as a libertarian. Uh, he said, Though I did not win, I am sure a lot of people in my constituency have heard about the philosophy of liberty and its significance. Uh, he has also gained knowledge through online schooling. He's received a diploma in legal studies at Allison.com, uh, Think Tank yep. 101 at Atlas Leadership Academy, and the Charter Team Program at Students for Liberty International. Uh, he is currently the leader of Ghana Students for Liberty, uh, while he's also working as a stock manager at Native Farms and studying oil and gas management at Blue Crest University. We've also got Nari Gamba Minsubo. Uh, Nari Gamba obtained a bachelor's degree in marketing at the University of Professional Studies in 2012. He's also the author of the book Immortals, which seeks to awaken the African youth. Uh, while in the university, uh, Nari Gamba assisted uh, the Student Representative Council to carry out a project to meet the basic needs of mental ailments in Ghana. A few months later, uh, ISODEC, a non-governmental organization in Tamale, uh, collaborated with him and his team to expand their mental health project. He became a libertarian with the help of colleague and SFL Ghana founder, Kwaku Adusi, uh, and he and they both work uh, with local farmers and, and those who will listen to help understand the liberty philosophy and free market. Okay, guys, is there anything I've really left out majorly that, that you guys are part of right now? Any kind of big things you guys are doing? Yeah, you've done absolutely well. The introduction and everything about this is accurate, and we thank you for that, you know. Well, uh, thank you for sending yeah. uh, the multi-page yes, yes, files for both of you to help me compile a, just a quick snapshot of your guys' life. Uh, it's it's fantastic to hear from you guys, so uh, welcome to the show. Uh, this will be thank featured you. on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, actually, this episode will be airing on July 23rd uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and I don't know offhand exactly what that translates to your guys' time, but I will be shooting you guys... Uh, the links a little bit uh, once once I get the video uploaded and uh, once it's ready to go live on YouTube. Uh, so I guess my first question, you know, I'd be a poor interviewer if I didn't ask the cliche question of what got you both into libertarianism? Was there any particular book, event, person? Uh, you know, many people in America, it's Ron Paul or Murray Rothbard. Uh, what was it for you? Yeah, um, my first time you know, to become a libertarian, that was... 2008, you know, when I had opportunity to interact with Kofi Akosa, who happens to be the founder and the leader of the Africa Youth Peace Corps. You know, he gave me a couple of books, some of them written by Lord Rick von Mises, that is a human action. I also read about Frederick Bastia, the law, and then the, the broken window fallacies. So now I came to realize that, no, there's something mixing in this society, Ghana to be precise. So when I came across libertarianism, you know, I thought that this particular philosophy, you know, which happens to be a political philosophy, when we are able to apply in our country, you know, we're gonna save the lives of so many individuals in the country. Because when there is a freedom, we have the incentive to create wealth for ourselves. So I decided to go around find people who are interested in spreading the liberty ideals, especially those who are pro-liberty. So I talked to people, and then also I explained the liberty philosophy to them, and then they were all happy to hear the words like that. You know, they embraced the philosophy, and then we started forming the AYPC, that is the Africa Youth Peace Corps. 
We started it around 2008. And since then, I've become a libertarian. After reading a couple of books by pro prominent libertarians in uh, outside the country, like America and then Europe. All right, right. Fantastic, Kwaku. That's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, Narigamba, you have any uh, major influences at all? Uh, well, actually, uh, to talk about the libertarianism, uh, the problem is that I, I got in touch with his friend, uh, Kwe say What transpired was that he introduced me to the philosophy, and I was like, wow, you mean all these things have been transpiring and people never knew about it? I went to the university, I, didn't even, I hardly didn't even know that I had to pay a lot more taxes to get my self-defense on some issues which I really didn't know. I had a couple of books, Freddie Baxter's, Ludwig von Mises, articles I read. Then probably a seminar I attended with the African Youth Corps was like, damn, what's <laughs> going down? Some things are really going down that people don't really know. So if I probably went to university, I went to uh, ISODEC, that is ISODC, and probably things like this are going on. I think some people have to know what I have known because they're missing a lot that can change this whole economy. And I thought that no. Libertarianism is something we need to actually explore and then advocate to let the people who are not well educated probably do not have the formal education to know about this. And that is exactly what the Students for Liberty are working on it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that, that libertarianism is the missing piece. So when I became a libertarian, uh, my first thing that I realized was that government is not a solution to our problem, but government is rather the cause of our problem. So that is what we've been telling our people wherever we, we go. We are propagating the ideas of liberty so that we all become free because it is the freedom that gives people the opportunity to create wealth for themselves. Liberty is the remedy against poverty. That's what I know and that's what I believe. And the worst part of it, if you want to hear from Nairo Gamba, is that we actually advocated this philosophy to the cocoa farmers because there was so much work done as compared to so many individuals. If cocoa, farm cocoa farmers can work on this uh, to um, create wealth for themselves outside government, uh, taking the advantage of what they do, I probably will make it a headway for Ghana. I suspect this. Right. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it, it's it's really just cool to uh, to hear all of the all the stuff so i i can i can basically say to my my viewers you guys are straight up anarchists like we are uh, right is that a that a fair uh, a, assessment yeah. perfect you know we've we're got to... anarchists we're eventually anarchists because yeah. what we look forward to doing as uh, students for liberty is that our advocacy is uh, going to reach out to public by means of media going through interviews and uh, i think we really want to go on media, you know, going to the FM stations, uh, joining with Money Gun and all that stuff to let people know a lot more. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, anything I can be, do to oh, help uh, yeah. with facilitating that, you guys just let me know. I don't have very many, I don't have really any uh, pull with any uh, actual radio stations out there. But uh, if you need me to be a liaison for you guys uh, between people in the network that I'm a part of, or you know, if I can find ways to help you contact other people, you guys just let me know. I want to, you know, help you guys spread your message. Uh, because it, it is so important. Uh, you know, like I said, it, everything stupidly gets gets focused on the United States, uh, claiming that the United States is some kind of bastion for freedom, when really it's the worst, most tyrannical empire that has ever seen, that's ever been on the face of the planet. I mean, maybe Hitler can shake a, a tiny stick at it, but wow. Uh, and, you know, since I don't really, unfortunately, pay too much attention to the political scene and anything not physically attached to the United States... Uh, you know, I'll have to beg for forgiveness for you from you guys here for my ignorance. Uh, but yeah, what's yeah, the political sure. atmosphere here in, over there in Ghana? Is it you know somewhat stable? Is it totalitarian? Is there room for an individual to basically live free? Uh, what's it like over there? Yeah, um, in, in Ghana, Ghana is one of the least free country in the world. I say this because there is no freedom in Ghana when it comes to. You know, in terms of economic freedom, we now we have the political freedom, and I am saying that political freedom is not necessary because if you have you are free to vote, and you you don't you don't have money to eat or to, to to you know make a living for yourself, it doesn't make sense. So we are saying that the government should give us the freedom so that we are able to create job for ourselves. Now, when the environment we are living in is friendly 
to economic activities. You know, people will be able to uh, do what they like. Always also use their potentials and their resources within to enrich themselves. Government should not intervene in the market. And this in Ghana, government has been doing it since time immemorial. So this is the create this is the one creating the worst problem for the individuals in this country. And what is more alarming is that the people themselves don't know. They don't know that the government which is rather creating problems for them. And wherever, wherever we go, we ask them, so what they, do they need? They, they are saying that, no, they want the government to do this and that for them. They still have to trust for the government. So we tend to use this opportunity to make a documentary, to send it outside there for all those who, who love liberty. All the liberty friends should watch and then give us any advice that they think that we can use to help our people right here. It, it looks as if all the people living in this country have the belief and the trust that the politicians are the supermen. And when they give the politician the opportunity, they will be able to turn things around for them. But that is not the case. Because when you open your eyes, if you have an eager eye to analyze what is happening in this country, you will see it clear that there's something wrong with the people. And that what is disturbing them mostly is the government. So if they are able to take government outside of their activities, they will be able to make a good living for themselves. Right, yeah. And it's it's kind of the same case around uh, here in the United States. You know, I see so many people, so many friends of mine, uh, who get so entrenched in the, in the military and in, in the welfare programs and saying, oh, I need, I need the government to give me my, my, my birth control because, you know, I yeah, can't be yeah. responsible for my own, you know, sexual lifestyle. And okay. that kind of, that kind of segues way nicely into my next question, you know, with seemingly petty things such as birth control being a, a huge issue for the United States, you know, what's the kind of big hot button topics in, in Ghana? Uh, what's the Students for Liberty uh, uh, Ghana uh, view uh, on uh, some uh, of these issues? Uh, to be frank with you, the problem we really have in Ghana is that people dependently rely on government to have their problems being solved as such. You know, government also puts in uh, permit restrictions against some odds that people are capable of make, creating wealth for themselves. A lot more because Ghana is a less developed country. When these uh, permit restrictions have been put in place, that is where we have some kind of like unemployment going on in the system. But for people to continue confiding in government to solve their problems is where I have a problem with a lot of uh, free lunch fallacies and all that stuff, free education. People really believe that government are doing their best. Hell no. That's not working out because the problem is that things like this ain't going to work because we always know they always want to dip deep down their pockets to fetch in something which is not really working out with us. I finished the university for barely a year. I realized there was nothing better. We had good ideas. Let me just say, for example, I wanted to go into logistics. Well, I have a permit restriction that I could not uh, take probably a load. Okay, put it on the side. We have other countries that are making good money for even doing marijuana plantation, although I want to talk about that. But the thing is that we probably might not be able to shut down government now, but if people are given uh, the, I mean, the free will to go into free market advocacy and then practice their own business, I think we're making a way forward for Ghana. And Ghana uh, really needs this advocacy, and Students for Liberty were really working on it. We're looking forward to people to really support us because we have uh, a few entrenched mechanisms that will help us put ourselves in place. And the thing is, uh, you know, it's not really going to be that easy, but we're just working it out. My president here is really fetching out ideas to make sure things go down this, the drain to let other people understand, starting with the people who have uh, who have nothing to do with it, both informal and uh, formal education. Working out from that, we have a few student representatives groups that we're talking to them. And I believe in a, in a year or two, no progress in the, in the nation. Yeah, yeah, let me chip in with this. You see, I believe that it is the ideas that move the world. It is an idea that brings prosperity. So now, people have the perception that it is the government that can turn things around and make things more easier, especially for them to enjoy their economic prosperity. But we are saying that this is this type of climate ideas is what is making us poor. And we believe that wherever we go, the message that we give them 
you know, the, the more we try to throw more light on it, they become aware that, yes, this is true. There is something wrong. So if we're able to change the ideas, it will influence the government. And then there will be no government in the near future. And I believe so, that once um, a lot of things have, have been able to uh, uh, manifest in our system, definitely this liberty philosophy will also manifest and we will we'll see it in practice. Now, gone are the days when the socialists had the opportunity to, you know, uh, 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 tap into the people's mind and then make them believe that the socialism philosophy will make them happy and then what you, you, you will use it to create a very friendly economic zone for them to thrive and flourish. But today, we, what we are we seeing is that the socialism, we came as a super system to change society and change it for, for the betterment, has rather been a threat to our personal and individual development. So right now, if socialism has been able to, you know, uh, and manifest in the society, and the society has believed so, um, socialism before, then I also have that belief, that conviction, that people will also change their mind. And then when people change their mind, it means that we are heading towards the right direction. And soon and very soon, I believe, with our advocacy program, a lot of people shall turn libertarian. And libertarianism shall see it in practice in Ghana here. Right, and it's it's one of those fun things that once you get people to really understand uh, the immorality of government, you know, not even thinking about the economic aspects of you know how much money they're draining, uh, the fact that there's really no such thing as wealth creation or government jobs because of the fact that they're stealing the money from us. Uh, it it just clicks in people's minds. People realize that. Hey, we don't need some big boss man up, you know, 300 miles away telling me what to do because yeah. I I'm already doing good peaceful cooperation with everybody around me anyways. You know, it's not complete chaos. Anarchy is not chaos. In fact, I had a conversation with a gentleman the other day and when I was discussing it with him, I, I work an overnight shift at uh, one of my local hotels and uh, he basically looked at me and said, "Well, anarchism is basically just uh principles simplified and it it just goes down to don't be a complete you know asshole don't be a dick uh you know respect <laughs> other people's property and you know life's good you can cooperate or not cooperate freedom of association it all is right there and the fact that people think that we need a government is is just laughable uh and you know again this is where i draw a lot of inspiration from you guys uh to you guys have so much positivity you know i found myself being you know, somewhat negative of late uh, as our ch for our chances <laughs> for liberty. Uh, but yeah. you know, guys like you and some of the others I've been interviewing lately, it, it's been a breath of fresh air. So I wanted to thank you for that for sure. Yeah, thank you. We're grateful. Uh, let's see. My next question here is uh, for Narigamba. Uh, I I saw in your bio uh, something about a book, Immortals, uh, talking about awakening the African youth. I went and. Try to do a quick Google search to try to find it. I use six thousand different keywords and this, that, and the other thing. I couldn't find much on it. Would you mind telling uh, my viewers and listeners uh, a little bit yeah, about actually, that book? To talk about Immortalis, Immortalis actually uh, a book that uh, has to do with morality of the individual who hasn't actually taken time to do what is right and probably might find changes in reading my book. It's not yet published because uh, I still haven't uh, made our minds to publish it. But I had intentions of making this publication for prisoners, actually on, uh, should I say, <laughs> non-profit. But, you know, it's not that easy publishing that book. So uh, I was just kind of like, OK, probably with time, if I'm able to source that finance, I'll be able to publish this book and distribute it to prisoners so that as they exhaust their times in prison, since we don't uh, have prisoners doing something that good, for goodwill in here, we just give it them to them to uh, read it through it, uh, make a positive change when they're coming out of prison. That's why I actually came up with this book. Right. No, that's 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 just awesome. And uh, in fact, uh, you and I can talk about uh, kind of logistics for this off air later. Uh, oh. I want to help you fund at least getting an ebook version of this put out there. Uh, be great. If, if I can help you out with that in any way I can, and I've got some friends who I can rally support from, I want to get you some help in at least getting the book published on the internet, you know, with an ebook for everybody to download, free, cheap, whatever. 
Uh, and then okay. we can start to work towards getting it physically published and printed okay. for uh, the people uh, that you want to hand it out to, uh, actually. Uh, so we'll, we'll touch I'll base be, on that. I'll, I'll be very grateful, uh, the Madam, and then uh, I'll look forward to having a discussion with you on that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, then next question here. Uh, Kawaku, what inspired you to create the Ghana uh, outreach uh, for Students for Liberty? Uh, you know, what what yeah. possessed yeah. you to want to do that yeah. as opposed that's to that's other organizations? Last question, but I have to uh, answer. Yeah. Um, you see, uh, Student for Liberty Ghana is a unified student-driven organization. So it, it's for students, you know, um, what we do is that we move from one campus to another and then we try to explain to the people, we introduce the idea of liberty for them and then we also empower them to form you know, a liberty club in their campus. But I also realize that you know, when you look at our policies, those who have been mostly affected by the policies are those who are living in the rural communities. So they need the message because they are being, you know, uh, uh, manipulated by the politician each and every time. So if we feed their mind with this particular philosophy, they will to change, and then they will see they will be skeptical to the government. And then when they they become skeptical to the government, I mean, the influence from the political parties and the politician, the technocrats, never will never never change them again. That is why we started doing the advocacy project so that we move from one community to another to ensure that the liberty philosophy and the free market ideas is inundated in each and every community. So we, we are anticipating that, you know, um, we, 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 we are not, you know, uh, uh, waiting to see a short term outcome, but we believe that by five to 10 years, we are going to see a positive change. We will see and an environment whereby government is no more necessary and we don't we won't even call government a necessary evil because government is already evil we cannot add that necessary to an evil evil is already evil and that is what we are to see <laughs> in the near future that's the immorality of government we don't need the assistance to be, be create wealth for us so that would have been richer if government has no intervention in this yeah. <laughs> so we, we try to make them understand how government use interventionism to you know steal and then take away their wealth and we also try to expose government deception and fallacies so wherever we go people are able to understand that the government is no longer the solution to their problem but government is rather the cause of their problem thank you Right, right. And uh, government being the unnecessary evil, I find that to be completely redundant as evil is already <laughs> unnecessary in itself. So yeah, that, that, that's kind of a just a fun, laughable statement anytime I see somebody yeah. wanting to vote for the lesser of two evils because the shit's still evil. <laughs> There's... Yeah, it's still evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you're right. You're right. It's like, right. You're right, it's like, it's like picking evil. Satan or his demon. Uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> There's no winning there. Yeah, there's no winning there. Government is already a monster. <laughs> yeah. It's like whether you want to get you know chewed on or swallowed whole right away. Uh, <laughs> so I guess the, the next little question for you guys is, uh, how has your work through Students for Liberty impacted your life? I know for me, working with uh, you know my different liberty-minded outlets for you know many years now, uh, and I did it just recently in the last three, four years, you know, become a complete anarchist uh, Rothbardian, uh, you know, it's it's made me a much more positive person somewhat, and it's really helped me reach out more to my community. Uh, you know, what's it done for you guys? Have you guys found a, a similar inspiration and a just a happiness to get up and and live life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same inspiration here because ever since I became libertarian, I became I become more positive in each and every day, and I, it has also helped me to reach out to my people. And uh, all the time, when it comes to argument, um, I have that knockout uh, 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 skills to win whoever that I meet. Because when we discuss whether government is a necessary evil or not, I try to make them understand that, no, the government, since it is the cause of our problem, we don't need the government in anything that we do. And so this has given me a, a lot of inspirations, and it has empowered me uh, both um, uh, psychically, and uh, psychologically, I must say so. 
Well, uh, if I must confess, Adam, the thing is, um, specializing in marketing at the University of Professional Studies, I felt like, man, I didn't know a lot about economics. To go with Ludwig von Mises, uh, doing Austrian economics, and a lot I learned about libertarianism, I feel like I, I, I created a whole Ghanaian economy because I'm learning a lot more of our economics, and I'm seeing that people really deserve what I have, what they are missing that I have learned. So the more the philosophy is being shared, the more people get to know how things get done in this nation. That's why I'm really interested in libertarianism and in free market economy. You know. Yeah. So um, I would say that libertarianism has really, you know, uh, uh, give me and powered uh, all as of all of us. Passion, you yeah. know. And all this time, I want to know more about the economy. You know, it, 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 it's, it's like um, I, 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 something that has empowered me to, you know, go deep, deep inside where there is no information to fish up more information. Because at the end of the day, it is the people that will, will hear the information. So all the time, each and every day, I try to learn more and I try to understand how ideas influence a group of people and then how some people respond to certain ideas it has really really helped me a lot right and, and the beautiful thing about economics is you will never learn everything there's always going to be something new i mean just in the last what couple of years bitcoin has just completely exploded on yeah, the market and that exposed a whole new uh, method of money which you know granted us libertarians and free market thinkers we understand that all money is is a medium of exchange it has no intrinsic value in itself uh but seeing it actually implemented uh in our lifetime it, it blows my mind and it makes me wonder you know what we're heading towards next you know are we actually going to get you know legitimately minted bitcoins are we going to get uh you know what what's going to happen are we going to you know start trading with with sticks again for some reason just out of you know just out of sheer boredom you know what are we going to do uh and it's it's just exciting to know that there's always something new uh coming up on the horizon um and speaking of, of new stuff, uh, do you guys have any major projects, videos? Obviously, we've got the, the book Immortals uh, and then, you know, other articles. Is there anything uh, that's in the works that you guys are throwing together that you want to share with my viewers? Kind of a sneak peek if there's anything like that uh, hidden in amongst your the deep recesses of your brain? Oh, yeah, we have to do stuff like that. But um, I, I think uh, the, the, the computer we are using... Uh, now it's kind of faulty on we cannot load all the things so maybe that will be done tomorrow because the, the computer is we are using is giving us some problem right now well isn't that the the story of everybody with computers <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it, it isn't that the service you know the network here is not all that good you know that right. that is the problem. Yeah, you know that is Africa. We are not yet rich, advanced level. We are still developing country. You know? Right. Not. I'm actually looking forward to see what Google Fiber can potentially do it out in your guys' neck of the woods. Because uh, you know, it's Google Fiber is becoming big in a lot of the bigger U.S. cities. And once they finally get the infrastructure perfected and and locked in, you know, there's no reason why internet speeds of 100 megabytes or 100 gigabytes a second won't be attainable uh, to where you guys can, you know, be efficient with your use of time, uh, you know, get out all the information you want, stream a video while downloading this book and, and writing this article while playing this video game for some silly reason. Uh, you know, you can, you know, eventually do all sorts of beautiful things. Um, so, uh, okay, what's some of the websites and, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, web uh how do I want to say this? Uh, yes. Uh, what, what's all the different web things? What's your uh, presence on the internet? Uh, throw it out there so my viewers can uh, can latch onto it and uh, touch base with you yes. guys. Uh, actually, if you go to cyrusgh.blogspot.com, you can find some articles that we wrote. You know, you go to um, the XFL, XFL website. website. And uh, I think I have a blog on Immortalis too, and then on our Facebook pages, you know, web pages. You go to the SFL web page, you go to my page, you can find a lot more stuff. Yeah, yeah that is um, SFL dash Ghana. Yeah, so we have the SFL Ghana page. So a lot of articles over there. So when you go there, you can see most of our articles over there. Yeah, and 
I do know that I've also got uh, one of our other hosts on the Voluntary Virtues Network uh, planning to chit-chat with you guys probably, what, a couple of weeks from now, next week, two weeks from now, something like that. Uh, Michael Damow, or yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah, to say yeah. his last name. Uh, so yeah, I've got it. That's, that's awesome. Uh, he, he's a fun guy. You will absolutely love your interview with him, uh, probably more so than mine, uh, to be honest with you. He's, <laughs> he's good. He's really good. <laughs> so definitely a, a shout-out to him. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. See, well, I guess we're going to start to wrap up. Uh, is there any last-second thoughts you want to give to my viewers, any kind of you know, quick 30-second inspiration, or even just to, for people uh, out in Ghana or in you know, different parts of Africa? You know, wh- what, can, what can you say to inspire them to, to push for liberty and to really just think for themselves and realize that they are economically viable in and of themselves? They don't need the state to tell them what to do. Okay, uh, talk of me, Naringumba. I actually wanted to base this on Ghana in the United States. Ghanaians actually need to divert their virtues from relying on government to solve their problems. My fellow Americans, which I really have uh, a greater percentage of them to be my audience on Facebook, uh, we have probably have 100% libertarians who doesn't support political interference. But um, for the few that had a mistake to do with Aaron Paul's comments about being a Republican, I mean, libertarian Republican. I was thinking that um, anything of that sort could probably be because uh, he wanted to offer his virtues for the Republicans in the United States. Um, the thing is that libertarianism is something that is to bring the comfort of individuals in our society. You understand? And then if people really want to have that financial freedom as we all are always looking forward to there is a need to change to have a, a better understanding of the liberty movement and the philosophy engage in free market advocacy and all that stuff actually i think we'll make a headway yeah definitely definitely uh, so yeah all right so uh, let me add my own adam <laughs> oh, <sure>. uh, <laughs> yeah I, I i believe that you know you know, the best person who can be the driver of my destiny is me, myself. And so, you know, do everybody, you know. So when you think about somebody who should drive you where you should do or anything that you want to do for yourself, you are the one with the power to do so. So I'm saying that if somebody want to engage with you in terms of business, then what should be the principle is the principle of exchange. Now, if you have that principle, then I think that society will live to see peace, prosperous, and what? Happiness. Without the principle of exchange, I don't think we see happiness because it is this principle that has been validated by the government for so long. That's why most of the time people complain and then people say that um, their, their properties have been what confiscated by the government. Yeah, it is true. Because if you have so much respect for the principle of exchange, I think we shall live to see a better society. And that is what we all hold. And we are all trying to do our best to ensure that we all embrace the liberty philosophy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I 100% agree with both of your guys' statements. Uh, so just a quick recap uh, for all my listeners. Check these guys out. Students for Liberty Ghana. Check them out on Facebook. You can Google search them and find them, you know, really quick click, uh, you know, through the Students for Liberty page. Uh, and there's there's a few other links that I'll put in the description bar below to where we can have you guys interact with these two wonderful gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank you guys for your time. Uh, I know the, the the time difference between the two of us made things kind of a little bit interesting uh, to organize our interview. So I do want to thank you guys for being flexible and sticking with me here. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, this I guess this will be uh, Adam Brott of Liberation Republic Republicai on the Voluntary Virtues Network signing off saying peace and love and liberty. Thanks so much. No, we are most grateful. <laughs>